This video covers events from the Stronghold series, intending to give players an overview of characters and stories. Spoilers ahead. Welcome back to the chaos and calamity that is medieval England. Today we explore another chapter in the Stronghold lore series. The lore of Stronghold intends to delve deep into the fictional history, characters and stories of the series, taking a closer look at the lords and ladies that do battle within. Our previous episodes focused on the feckless Duke de Puce and spineless Duke Beauregard. And if you haven't examined those entries in the series, be sure you consult their contents before diving into this one. Today, we look at the brutal, vicious Duke Truth, often referred to by the subjects he violated as the pig. Blow the horn, bang the drum, the pig is coming to town. Greetings, sire. Your stronghold awaits you. Wood needed, my lord. The pig's story is one of tragedy and misfortune. Born to a poor family somewhere in northern France, a cruel world where survival was far from guaranteed. At his birth, upon looking at his hideous face, his parents decided to abandon him. It was a time of scarce gold, tattered clothes and long winters. They had little choice but to leave him to the fate of the wicked back streets of a small town. He was malnourished and reliant on the kindness of strangers for scraps of bread or meat. Unfortunately for him, such kindness did not exist. Forced to steal, fight and suffer for even just the bare necessities, his resolve was constantly tested. But one fateful day, his fortunes changed forever. A group of travelling bandits entered the town, causing ruckus and disruption in every tavern they barged into. By chance, they witnessed one of the pig's poor attempts at stealing from the kitchen. They found his thievery more amusing than adept. But even so, they recruited him into their gang. Here, they thought, was a moldable, malleable young innocent who already had the essential credentials for their particular line of work. Cruelly duped into this new surrogate family, the pig finally felt like he belonged somewhere. Like he had someone to watch his back. But, exploiting his naivety, the bandits would send him in first into every dangerous meat, risky collection and potential brawl in their travels. However, slowly but surely the pig realised his situation the fall guy for his two-faced seniors. And so, by now an adolescent, this scrawny, underfed and uneducated ruffian used all the experiences and hardships he faced during his criminal upbringing to his advantage. He rose up the ranks of the gang, developing crude but effective understandings of both combat and strategy. He learned the persuasiveness of blunt instruments, cudgels, clubs, bludgeons and maces. A predilection towards brutal force rather than clean precision. Eventually, and rather surprisingly considering the gang's violent tendencies, the pig was elected leader, having showcased how cold and callous he could be, and his ability to use even primitive strategy and sheer resilience to keep the gang going. He took to his newfound position with a wretched enthusiasm, extorting locals, stealing horses, and orchestrating raids. And it is here where we see him embrace the title of the pig. For when it came to his gang's pillaging, he would greedily claim the best food and drink for himself, perhaps making up for the scarcity his upbringing had offered him. The next few years saw the pig's reputation grow. Throughout northern France, he would become famous through his gang's exploits. Reckless and ruthless as they were, they never lost a battle or skirmish. De 
Swiss caught the eye of nobility who, in a shameless divergence, did not punish the pig, but instead overlooked the pain he had caused the local peasants and offered him a pathway to become a duke. There were no exact details of what the pig had to accomplish or what devilry he executed in order to become Duke Truth. But what we do know is that by the late 11th century, with his new title, he was recruited to join the invasion of England alongside Duke de Puce, Duke Beauregard and Duke Volpe as the sledgehammer of their operation. The pig sailed from northern France to the east of England, taking control of numerous counties stretching from Nottingham to Newcastle, imposing his heavy-handed approach to any levies unfortunate enough to be under his forceful rule. Characteristically, he demanded high crop yields and staged elaborate, if rudimentary, gatherings, most probably just for the excuse of feasting on whatever had found its way to the nearby granary. He was cursed by all who served him, an ugly occupier who lacked any care for the people he ruled. But all hope was not lost. Rumours grew of a rebellion in the south of the country, which had already displaced Duke de Puce and was hot on the heels of Duke Beauregard. The pig was content with his newly conquered corner of England, indulging himself in the foreign delights, often at the expense of all around him. But one day, Duke Volp, military leader and overseer of the invasion of England, arrived at his doorstep. Why didn't you intervene sooner? <laughs> no one asked me. These rebels have had too many easy victories against Hippus. He's making us look weak. Make sure they don't succeed this time. I'll go break some eggs. The wolf ordered the pig to assist his fellow dukes, the boy's rebellion proving too mighty for their wanting military strategies. And to do this, he aimed to bring down his mace upon a key figure of the rebellion. The boy and Salam won hard-fought battles and skirmishes, driving their forces up through England and dispatching every foreign leader as they did. In response, the pig captured Lord Woolsack, the custodian of the rebellion's finances and gentle advisor to the boy. News of Lord Woolsack's capture reached the rebellion, shortly followed by the announcement of his death. <laughs> I make Woolsack die in much pain. <laughs> I pull out teeth, cut off toes, break knees. <laughs> Most fun I have for a long time. <laughs> How did you do? Did you hunt down your prey? <laughs> With Woolsack killed and the pig leading a counter-attack to retake liberated counties, the boys' rebellion found their will tested like never before. But with more injustices every day at the hands of their occupiers, they would find the strength to continue their struggle. There would be two key incidents which would see the tide turn in favour of the rebellion. First ensuring that both Duke Volp and Duke Truth had given him their full attention, the boy strategically retreated, foregoing glory in exchange for a positional advantage. And it is here where the pig's first blunder occurred. Whilst hunting down the boy and his army, Truth was outmaneuvered and lost the scent. Frustrated and returning to his castle for supplies, the true intent of the boy was revealed. The pig looked upon his castle beaten and bombarded with smoke rising from its heart. But the boy himself was nowhere to be seen. The boy and his army had granted themselves essential breathing room to rest and recover, intent on returning to finish the pig once and for all. With the pig truly rattled, the boy had the upper hand. The balance of power was tilting and gathering more momentum with every passing day. 
From the most unlikely of places, a key piece of military technology was offered to the boy and his army. In return, they requested protection of a key library within a local county. We must defend our library at all costs. If Duke Chuff were to get his grubby hands on our knowledge, then the kingdom would surely be doomed. We have one final piece of knowledge to impart to you. The secret of boiling pitch. This may aid you in the defence of the monastery. With this unpleasant addition to his arsenal, the boy whittled the pig's main army down to a fraction of what it once was, leaving no choice but to order a far from strategic mass retreat to his castle, only recently repaired. No! No! No, this doesn't happen to the pig! I'll never lose! The boy gave chase, using the momentum of his victory to embolden his forces. And when they arrived at the pig's doorstep, a long and gruesome siege took place, in which the boy's army was finally victorious. As the smoke cleared and the rubble settled, the pig had been stuck. No! No, pig not die! No! No! Unfortunately for everyone in both medieval England and France from 1066 onward, the boy's dispatching of the pig would not see an end to the strife and crimes of the truth name. When the wolf returned for his second invasion of England, he had the three depuced sons by his side as we discussed in chapter one. But they were not the only offspring to join his cause. The two sons of the pig, equally as ugly and bulbous as their father, also looked to England. Not only for their potential personal profits, but also for vengeance upon the boy. And so Earl Swinefoot and Bishop Redham took to England to finish what their father had started. Complete dominion and extortion over whatever lands they could claim with a bounty on the boy's head whilst they did it. Neither the Earl nor Bishop earned their titles. These were given to them by their father after he had killed their predecessors, no doubt after extensive periods of torture. Whilst undoubtedly privileged, they were still cursed with their father's lack of intelligence or grace. But fortunately for the wolf, they also inherited an undeniable resilience, an instinct for absolute survival. Of the two brothers, it was Earl Swinefoot who would find himself the first to face the boy in this new campaign. It would begin with a lure into a castle siege the boy had no hope of winning. Swinefoot would send out a battalion intent on feigning defeat to the forces of England before retreating to a sleepy looking castle to lure the boy to a false opportunity. And in the heat of a castle siege, Swinefoot would strike. Manning the walls and operating hidden siege equipment, he surprised the boy, killing many and maiming even more in the chaos of battle. Even with this surprise attack, the boy would prove victorious, claiming the castle for the English. So Longarm galloped towards the castle, out of breath and panicking, telling the boy of the real danger, the real plan. Lady Catherine, the sister of the king, had been captured. The boy and Sir Longarm arrived at the abbey, where Swinefoot and Redham were waiting. Lady Catherine had no choice but to endure the terrible words and gazes of Redham, who was said to be a pig in priest's clothing. He twisted the church's authority to his own agenda. But, fortunately for the English, the daily toils and tasks of a bishop don't necessarily lend themselves to military strategy. After a long and hard battle in which Swinefoot and Redham brought the entirety of their military might to bear, the boy vanquished them, leaving a field of bloodied corpses lit by the pale English moonlight. But the brothers still escaped, cowering back to the wolf. Defeated and humbled, they groveled at his feet. The brothers were met with disappointment as the truth name had been repelled once again. 
whether in a desperate attempt to rid himself of the boy once and for all, or simply and truly at an end with the truth's family incompetence, the wolf sent all remaining forces with Swinefoot and Redham as a counterattack. But once again, they failed. Once again, repelled, just like their father. The history of war repeated itself once again. Swinefoot and Redham made one final play. Intent on calling on the spirit of their brutal father, they entrenched themselves in his old castle, in some way hoping that they could fill themselves with his tenacity. It was not to be. The boy, reinvigorated with the return of Lady Catherine and the assistance of Lord Blackstaff and Sir Longarm, led an effective siege upon the castle, capturing them both and caging them up like the animals they were. The truth name would return to the gutters from whence it came, never to plague England again. And so that brings to an end another chapter in the Stronghold Law series. If you haven't seen the entries in this series focusing on Duke de Puce or Duke Beauregard, please click the link in the description below. And if you enjoyed this video and would like us to do further entries in the Stronghold Law series, please like this video. To ensure you are notified about any further entries in this series, please be sure to subscribe and to click the notification bell.